Okay. I want to show my appreciation. All right, well, there you have it. The, the tips uh, are just not money, are they, but they're time and talents. And God depends upon all that, and that, that's one way we have our, of showing our appreciation through these times and talents as well. But he has given us much, and all that God's <clears throat> given us? Well, yeah. I mean, everything he's given us, I mean, if you uh, just think about it, the... Uh, the, the food that we are able to get, the air we breathe, the homes we live in, I mean, and we're not even asking, he's not even asking for 15% on 15 that. 15% of everything? <laughs> that would be quite a bill. Well, it's more than that, though. Our gifts to the Lord are evidence that uh, it's our involvement with God, and they show that we are united with God in pursuit of the kingdom that we're all after. You're right. right? I hadn't thought of it that way. All right. Well, there's an acronym that says for tips, and that is to ensure prompt service. And in a spiritual sense, it's an acronym as well. It means our totally involved personal service. T-I-P-S, tips. I get it. All right, all right. That's it, totally involved personal service to our totally involved personal savior. Our God has called and gathered us here, and we begin in his name, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us confess our sins before God and in the presence of one another. You may kneel as you are able or remain seated. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, I confess and By the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, all your sins are forgiven you, and you are given a new heart and a new life. Please stand. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. We share a sign of this peace God has given us.
pray together the prayer of the day. O Lord, keep your church, we pray, 
seated. The first lesson is from Isaiah, the 35th chapter. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance with the re recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall a lame man leap like a deer and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness and the streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water in the haunt of jackals where they lie down. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. The word of the Lord.
The second lesson is from James, the second chapter. My brother, show no partiality as you hold the faith in your Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man wearing a gold ring and fine clothing comes into your assembly, and a poor man in shabby clothing also comes in, and if you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and say, you sit here in a good place, while you say to the poor man, you stand over there or sit down at my feet, have you not then made distinctions amongst yourselves over the, uh, and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has not God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs to the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Are not the rich the ones who oppress you and the ones who drag you into court? Are they not the ones who blasphemy the honorable name by which you are, were called? If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well, but if you show the partiality, you are committing sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. But for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. The word of the Lord. Would the children please come forward for the children's message? How are you all today? Good. I know you started two weeks ago, right? School? Yeah. How, how did everybody start to school start? Good. How's yours? Good. So, today there's a story in our gospel lesson about a man who it says was completely deaf and could not speak. Imagine how hard that would be to, to go about life. Not able to. Any of you have any favorite music? What's your favorite? Do you have a favorite band or? Like a lot. Like me, I, I don't really have a. I have a few favorites, but I like a variety. May, but then also imagine not be able to hear. But then also, not to be able to speak when you need help. Isn't that such a hard thing? But the beautiful thing about this text today that even though this man could not speak or hear he couldn't help himself and many of us are the same way you and i we might be able to hear and ask for help from mom and dads but some of us we don't hear too often do you ever uh, have a mom and dad tell you to do something and we don't do it yeah we kind of ignore it we, we ignore it well, that's kind of like being deaf as well. We're, we're deaf to our mother's ears because we don't want to listen. But then also, uh, but the good thing is that Jesus, and even our parents, even when we don't want to listen, our parents give us instruction and give us, uh, uh, give us help 
when sometimes we don't even deserve it. Our parents give us help, and that's what Jesus does. Jesus comes to us when, even when we're misbehaving or anything like that. And he comes to us and he says in this, in Mark today, he says a word called ephatha, which means open. And Jesus, in our baptism, he opened our ears of faith and he opened our hearts for faith. And he gave us a promise that we didn't deserve on our own. And so we can be thankful that even sometimes when we're naughty and we don't listen and we're deaf that way, that Jesus still hears us when we need our help. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Well, how about we say a prayer of thanks? Dear God, thank you for helping us even when we do not listen to you or our parents. Help us to listen, to love you and our parents. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming to see me. Bye. Bye. Please rise for the hearing of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Seraphonician by birth, and she began, it begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the ch children be fed first, for it is, not, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs under the table even eat the, uh, the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter, and she went home and found the child lying in bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned to the region of Tyre, and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, in the region of Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf, and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hands on him, and ta taking him aside, from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting and touching his tongue, uh, and looked up to heaven and sighed and said to him, Epatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged, the, charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all, the, all things well. He even makes the, the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Our gospel today has two wonderful stories where we see the miracles of Jesus. But today I'm going to focus mainly on verses 31 through 37, the story in which Jesus heals a man who is deaf and mute. Many of us have a struggle with hearing, some of it may be to age. I know that within the two year mark of my marriage, my wife said that my hearing began to decline or become selective. But either way, whether it be my own doing or whatever it may be, my hearing 
faded for my wife, whether it be out of just, I think, mainly sinfulness. But all of us at some point, whether it be physical or not, our hearing is attacked by a similar spirit which attacked the Seraphonician woman, a spirit of sin. That even though sometimes we don't intentionally mean to ignore our loved ones, ignore our children, our work, and especially our Lord, our hearing becomes absent. I know that sometimes when a loved one comes home from work, or you come home from work and you hear them speak of an event after another event, another event of a bad day, spilling their guts out to you, telling pretty much how the world stinks, can be an easy habit to plug our ears, to ignore. Um, I'm guilty of it just as much, especially as men, that when our wives have a hard time at work to just say, all right, I'm here listening, but all that's happening is this head nodding. And then rather than just nodding my head, I say to her, rather than if, if, um, validating her concern or her worry, I take man mode and I try to fix the things which, to be honest, I can't fix. We guys have a tendency to say, well, what's your problem? Let's fix it. We're man. We can do it. We have, we're strong. We're able. And to be honest, the power of a word can do. Imagine what this man's face must have been like when Jesus gave the world's greatest wet willy. I'm just kidding. That what it looked like is Jesus spit on his fingers and stuck it into the ears of this man. I don't think he went or anything that you do when you give a wet willy. But Jesus spit on his fingers, put it into the ears of this man and says, Epatha, be opened. And all of a sudden this man who was deaf physically, not of his own sin, but the spirit of this world, a sinful spirit that caused death and an informality on his body. His ears were open. His tongue were released. Imagine what that face must have looked like. It could be kind of hard for us. But I have a similar uh, experience. I have a video. It's only 50 seconds, but it's a video of a little boy who's eight months old and he received a cochlear implant. And for the first time, he's going to hear his mother's voice. And we're going to see what his face was like when his ears were opened and he heard the word. John, let's turn it back on. And he's back on again. See how he turned? Hi, Jonathan. Talk for a second. Hi. Did you hear that? <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Could you hear that? You got that dad, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jonathan. <laughs> Hi. We call that a late Christmas present. <laughs> Hi. Good job. That's really good. What a beautiful image. Someone whose ears because of the sin of the world, his ears were plugged. But for us, we have ears that are plugged by our own sin, our own selfishness. In St. James, it always is sometimes that text today makes us feel that like that our faith is always about what we are doing. That if we have this measuring stick. We can show us how much we're faithful. 
when to be honest, faithfulness comes by hearing. Hearing your Heavenly Father in your heart and ears, your heart and hearts, your stiff tongue saying to you when you're unable to hear, unable to save yourself or speak a word for help, your Heavenly Father comes to you in His Word. He says to you, and no matter what your struggle is, it says, Ephatha. Mark does a wonderful job throughout the Gospel of Mark to show the exact Aramaic words that fell from the mouth of our Lord. For us, in our baptism, I will... For your pastor probably wasn't speaking Aramaic, but he was speaking the words of the Lord. He spoke to a word that even in your infancy, or later in life, for those of us who maybe been baptized later, he spoke to a word that hopefully opened your ears. But maybe not even at that point, but maybe later in life, because some people say, well, I was baptized, but I didn't really understand or believe later. Well, we see even in our gospel text today that this woman who knew the Seraphonician, uh, who the Seraphonician woman who had the sick daughter, that word was planted in her that there was a Savior, a Savior that can move mountains, a Savior that can heal anything. And she heard him. But then when she saw him face to face, that faith became reality. For us who are deaf of the heart, and maybe sitting here today not sure if we really have heard, well maybe because we have been hardened. And maybe there's things we haven't repented of and, and handed over to the Lord. Rather than struggling with it on our own, we need to place those burdens on the cross. For you who are deaf, I give you a word of advice as well. That when a loved one, whether male or female, having a bad day, and maybe you don't have the solution even if you are a big tough man, The simple words of saying, I'm sorry that you went through that. The simple words of, I can't imagine, can be far more effective than saying, let me show you how I can fix it. Because no human being likes to be some other human being's self-help project. People want acceptance. People want to... Yes, hear that, yes, that stinks. But they want to hear you saying, I'm with you. I'm never going to leave you. And that's the word that the Lord gave the Seraphonician woman and this man who was deaf. He, he entered in when they needed him, unable to save themselves, and he gave that promise open, opening their hearts, placing his truth and his love. For you today, may you know that Lord, the Lord Christ has claimed you, has a word for you, that your sin has died on the cross. That when he went there, he placed it there so that your ears of sin may be melted away and that you may know that he welcomes you not with a wet willy but with a heart of love a heart of mercy a heart of forgiveness even in our worst times of being deaf your Lord loves you he is never to forget you and he is not going to leave you in your hardness or in your death. He's going to come to you 
in your grave. And instead of just saying Ephatha to your heart, he's going to come and say Ephatha to your grave. And that, that grave of hardness will be shattered, it'll be lifted, it'll be opened. And you shall rise like this deaf man. Amen. Together with the saints of all times and all places, we confess the one true faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. I believe in the Holy You may be seated. We join our hearts in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, while the man of lawlessness has not yet been revealed, his works are being seen in increasing number. Comfort the families of those who have suffered from wickedness. Comfort them with the promise that lawlessness will be brought to nothing and that their loved ones restored to them in eternal life. Grant your protection to those who work to maintain peace and safety. Our armed forces, police, 
firefighters, and emergency personnel. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, season our daily speech with the truth of your grace and mercy and the redemption won for us in Christ so that the word that creates faith will go forth through us to those you are drawing to Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Assist us, merciful God, to gladly help those we encounter who are in need, not so that we would gain any reward or be noticed, but only that those helped would know your care for them and praise your goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Father, speak through your Son and Holy Spirit to those with worried hearts. Be strong, do not fear. As your beloved Son healed the sick and defeated death, so also in your good time and according to your will, heal the sick and comfort the suffering. We remember especially the families of Joan Paulson and Ruby Olmsted. We lift up in prayer Tina Fergie and her family, Jean Hoppy, John Wilson, and our other family members and friends who cry out to you in their need. Lord, in your mercy. God of might and mercy, help us to look to you alone for all good, day by day and hour by hour. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bring forth now our tithes and offerings. Stand and pray together our offertory prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, help us to seek. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and we had given thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, keep us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of your sins, and the promise of eternal life. Please be seated.
took my shame, my blame on my cross. How deep is your grace that you could see my need and chose to take my place and then for me these words I'd hear you say Father no forgive them for they know not what they do I will go Please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and mind and keep you in true faith. And I declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some announcements before we go. Next Sunday is Rally Sunday, the beginning of our uh, Sunday school year. We will distribute Bibles to our second graders at the 8 o'clock service, and our shift to our 8 and 10.30 service schedule will begin. Confirmation kicks off this Wednesday evening. All 8th and 9th graders, together with parents, gathered in the parish hall at 6 p.m., also on Wednesday, all pre-K through first grade Sunday school teachers and staff will meet at 5 p.m. All other teachers and staff who, could make, who couldn't make it to the first safety procedure meeting will meet at 6 p.m. Christus Executive Assistant Lynn Grunwald will be taking the second Tuesday off each month as a vacation day, something she has well earned. Beginning this Tuesday, uh, uh, September the 8th, 
In addition, the office will be closed Monday the 7th in observance of Labor Day. It's Christus' turn to once again to serve the community meal this Thursday. Please sign up outside the office if you can be of any assistance. Uh, the funeral service for Ruby Olmsted will be next Sunday at uh, afternoon at 2 p.m. with visitation beginning at 12:30. And also for those who most people probably heard, uh, Joan Paulson passed away last week, and uh, her funeral was yesterday. And so uh, we keep her family and um, her friends in her thoughts and prayers as well. Pastor Ben, if I may, choir season starts too. Wednesday night, senior choir starts, and I think Ann, the kids do too. Um, they're at earlier than us, six senior choirs at 6.30. Please join us. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to fear God, love God, and trust God.